this month we have been talking about the Holy Spirit and we're talking really a lot about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So remember our teaching is recognizing spiritual guidance. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 3 and I will lay some foundations again and we'll take it from there. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on your own understanding. So watch what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and what? Lean not on your own understanding. So watch this. So the reason why you do not consult God is because you don't trust him. Because anyone you trust, you value their opinion and you value their input. So it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your understanding. So the reason why you don't ask God, you know, should I move to Canada? Should I go into banking? Should I move to America? Should I move to Kenya? Should I move to Abuja? Should I, you know, um, should I marry that lady? The reason why you don't ask God is because you don't trust him. So let me give you an example. Um, how many of you, when you have malaria, you'll go and see a doctor? Fantastic people. How many of you, when you have malaria, instead of seeing a doctor, you go to the pharmacist and buy some drugs? Wait, let me see. Wow, almost the whole church, right? See, you know why? The area where you feel as if you know, you don't consult someone. The area where you feel as if you don't know, what do you do? You consult someone. So question, why are you not consulting God? Because you feel as if you know I don't need his help. Because this is saying you. When you have malaria, you go, but if they say you have one big disease, hepatitis something, will you go and buy drugs? No. But the reason why I say, oh, malaria, I can figure malaria out. Malaria is a small thing for me. So you go and buy the drugs. So if you find out that often, you don't find yourself leaning on the Holy Spirit, the reason why is that in your mind, you got it figured out. But if you don't have it figured out, you will find yourself doing those things from time to time. So see what the Bible says here. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. See what it says. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. So as a result of the fact that you trust God, what will happen? You will not be leaning on your own understanding. So as a result of the fact that I know that my decisions are wonderful, but I can't depend on them, I will not be leaning on my own understanding. The next verse says what? In all your ways do what? Acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct your path. That means that God wants to direct your path. God wants to show you the way, but he needs you to acknowledge him. He needs you to acknowledge him. That's what he's waiting for. That acknowledgement. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. So watch this now. If I don't acknowledge him, then I do not see direction. So if I acknowledge him, then I get direction. So one of the things we began to say when we said this teaching is this. That man is not designed, man was designed rather, to depend on God for guidance. A man totally dependent on himself for guidance will often find himself in trouble. So, very powerful. And what does spiritual guidance do for us? Spiritual guidance is God's way of protecting us. Spiritual guidance is God's... So when you say God needs to guide you, spiritual guidance is God's way of protecting us. Spiritual guidance is God's way of providing for us. Let me, let, 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 let's go back. Psalm 23. Let's read from verse 4. Psalm 23. The Bible says this. Watch what the Bible says. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me, and thy what? Thy thy rod and the staff, they comfort me. Watch what he says. He says, the reason I will go through a very tough time and I will not be troubled is because of your divine presence. And guess what? It's only God's guidance that God's guidance, anywhere God's guidance leads you to, there will be God's presence. And God's presence is the ultimate guarantee. It's the ultimate guarantee for victory in any situation or circumstances. So why do we need what guidance? Why do we need God's guidance? Listen, 
Because one, you cannot even fulfill the will of God for your life without guidance. You can't. Absolutely impossible. That's the first reason why you need guidance. The second reason why you need guidance is this. Guidance is the way God used to protect you. I, I said this to you earlier on. I said, there are certain evil that must happen. That even God might not be able to stop. But the way God protects you is not by stopping that evil. God will what? Shield you away or guide you away through the evil. So I'll give an example. So when Jesus was born and Herod wanted to kill Jesus, what did God do? God did not stop Herod by sending angels. What did he do? He actually gave him divine guidance and say, pack your things and move to where? Egypt. Watch this. Some people, some bad thing wants to happen and God says, don't get involved in that. I say, God, no, no, no. I will pray. I will change it. Listen to me. Sometimes the best you can do is listen to God. Not even sometimes, all the time. If Jesus Christ, God can tell him, run away from Herod. Why can't God tell you to run away? He said, no, no, I'm not going to run away. The Bible says, he shall give his angels charge over us. The angel he has given to take charge of you, I've told you to run. <laughs> Glory to God. Sometimes the way God protects you from losing money is by preventing you from investing in a certain business. And it's not that when you now lose the money, Father, I'm a tighter. Lord, I'm a tighter. And he broke the devourer. Ha! Ah, I'm a child of God. This kind of. But listen, he was preventing you from investing in that business. Sometimes the way God will prevent you from a bad marriage is by preventing you from what? From marrying that guy. Sometimes the way God will help you not to get into trouble is by preventing you from traveling to a certain place. He says, he says that thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I've heard stories of people that they were meant to get on an aircraft to travel. And as about to travel, the Spirit of God said to them, do not travel, go back home. And they pack their things home only for those aircraft to have an accident. Disobeying the prompting of God can make you lose your life. It can take away your life. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, there's a man called a young prophet. God told him, do not stop. Do not go back the way you came. He stopped and went by. Bible says as he was going home, a lion met him and what? Ate him up. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say Hallelujah. God's guidance is important. The way you raise your children. See, listen, everybody is doing something that doesn't mean to work for you. The fact that everybody is doing it, it doesn't mean to work for you. You want to send your children to school abroad? It's a wonderful idea. But just make sure it's God's plan for their life. Many of us are so interested. We, have, we, we want to lead our children in a certain way that God doesn't want them to go. And the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And see, it didn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go. He said train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. There is a way every child has to go. Every father, every mother must be interested. Not in just raising children. In raising children in such a way that God wants them to go. Very powerful principle. Guidance is important. So, now that we know guidance is important, the second thing I want to say is this. How does God guide us? And I'm just backing up a little from what we've done before. How does God guide us? God, see, um, okay, let's do this. God is a spirit, and because God is a spirit, he leads us spiritually. He guides us what? Spiritually. Watch this now. But I, I'm going to call, is your phone with you? Okay, let me call you. Is your phone fake? How come it's not ringing? Can you hear my phone? Is your phone ringing? Is your phone, can, can you fly, let's see. T turn it towards us, turn it towards us. Is it ringing? Okay. Question. Why is this phone ringing? Watch this now. I didn't say I want to call Brother Ike's phone. Who do I want to call Brother Ike? 
But the moment I pick up my phone to bo- call Brother Ike, the only way he can receive this signal is that he must have what? A phone. Because that communication is from phone to phone. What does that mean? God is a spirit. If he's going to talk to you, is your spirit is going to talk to you. God is a spirit. So, so listen, eh? There's no, on my phone, you don't see Brother Ike's phone. No. I didn't even say I want to call Brother Ike's phone. I want to call Brother Ike. But when I call Brother Ike, Brother Ike does not ring. You don't see him. Like, no. He doesn't ring. What rings is his phone. Because I'm calling through a GSM phone. So what will receive the communication must be what? I'm not a GSM phone. So if God is a spirit and God talks to you, what receives the communication of God is not your head, is not your eyes, is not your ears. What receives the communication of God is what? Your spirit. So the reason why many of us are not hearing God is this. You are expecting to hear God with what? Your ears. Meanwhile, God is talking to your spirit. You are expecting to hear God with your head. Meanwhile, God is talking to your spirit. You are expecting to feel God. Meanwhile, God is talking to your spirit. If God the spirit, then it talks directly to our spirit. Watch something else. Give the phone to someone in the choir. Just throw it at someone in the choir. Come forward. Stay where you are. If I call his phone again, will he know I'm calling him? Why? If I call Brother Ike again, will he know I'm calling him? Because not with his phone. When you are not active with your spirits, when God calls you, you will not be aware. So, God, this is God calling, 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 calling. But because he's not active, the phone cannot receive it. But it doesn't mean that God is not calling. See, that is the problem with you when you don't have a vibrant Christian life. It, it's not God. Someone says, God, why are you not talking to me? Listen, God is the one always talking. As a matter of fact, when Adam and Eve sinned, guess what? It was Adam that ran away. It was God that said, Adam, where are you? God is, someone say, where is God? If you are saying, where is God? You are asking the wrong question. You should ask yourself, where am I? Because God is the one that is always saying, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? He's always saying something. But the reason why you cannot receive from the Lord is because, hey, what your receiving device has been passed on. Your phone has been switched off. You are not active. Your SIM is not activated. So when God talks to you, he doesn't talk to your head. He doesn't talk to your eyes. God speaks to your spirit. Glory to God.